imagine that the surface of the balloon is kind of the field of consciousness. We started with the idea that the universe is a gigantic field of consciousness. Okay, controversial, but <laughs> again, it's like, if you do take seriously something like the binding problem, at some point you realize, okay, you have to change your background assumptions. The background assumption that I think makes things work is that the universe is a gigantic field of consciousness. It's very strange, but okay, like let's take that <laughs> for the time being. Um, the question is like, okay, how does that universal field of consciousness get separated into uh, individual components, different perspectives? So uh, the answer, I think, is topological segmentation. Uh, you know, metaphorically, this would be like you twist the balloon. Um, and then, you know, this is not just a quantitative difference. Is a qualitative difference. It's an actual change in the global topology. In that, like, when you twist it enough, there's a precise moment where the balloon collapses and you get a, a pinch point. And when you get a pinch point, essentially, that forces you to go through that pinch point if you want to go from one side of the balloon to the other. But it also collapses what kind of information you can transmit from one side of the balloon to the other, because now you're forced to go through this, you know, zero dimensional point. So like, okay, maybe you can transmit like a yes or no question, you know, but you, you cannot send a picture. Uh, I mean, you can over time, right? Like with sequences of yes or no's, but it, it becomes like a discrete thing. Whereas everything in one of the sides where it does, you know, you do have kind of this continuity of the field, you can have entire pictures. You can have like elaborate states of information. Now, um, you may ask, like, okay, how does this happen in physics? And I would say, like, well, there's actually very, very rigorous and technical reasons why. Um, and for people who are like in, into this, you can look up bifurcation theory, which is the whole field in math for like how differential equations can give rise naturally to topological segmentation. And in the context of electromagnetism, I would encourage you to look up. Um, cohomology of the EM field. And it's like a very active area of research. There's a, like a lot of physics phenomena that cannot be explained unless you take into account topological changes. And I could go into some of them, which is very, very interesting. Like, yeah, <laughs> they don't teach you this in, you know, high school or, or oftentimes not even in college, but it's like, like, whoa, actually topology really matters <laughs> for, for physics. But like, once you have this segmentation, so here's how these like, part can act as a unit. This can act as a unit because if the field, you know, has excitations, like you can um, uh, kind of like make it wavy. Of course, like if you were to see this in a, uh, you know, high speed camera, whenever I hit it and it makes a sound, you would literally see mechanical waves going back and forth. And the reason, you know, like this segment would sound a little bit higher in pitch then like the whole thing is because now there's also, you know, some of those waves only stay kind of like going back and forth in this segment. And so they are like higher, higher in frequency. I mean, essentially the, the wave comes back much qu more quickly because it has less of a distance to travel. Um, in other words, you will get what is called the resonant modes of this segment of this um pocket of the field and a resonant mode is one way in which a whole can express itself in each of its points in each of its parts um like one classic example is like the sound of a, a guitar that like a lot of people think like well the sound of a guitar is just the sound of the string and that's absolutely not the case <laughs> the guitar the sound of the guitar is actually the entire guitar vibrating um, an acoustic guitar in particular. Uh, and essentially that's also why like it's so much louder to have a string actually connected to a, a guitar as opposed to just a string on its own because it can discharge all of its energy much more quickly because it's making the entire guitar vibrate. And so there's like a lot more surface area with the air. <laughs> so when you have like a shape like that, actually the sound of it is expressing all of the shape at once. Um, and likewise, when you have like a topological segmentation of a field, 
and the waves bounce off of the edges, then the way in which that thing vibrates will be an expression of the whole of it. And I think essentially that is what is going on with uh, our experience, our consciousness. <laughs> that uh, the particular shape of our consciousness actually determines the way in which energy vibrates inside it. And a lot of what determines like the quality of your consciousness is the aggregate of all of those vibrations simultaneously. And it's uh, computationally very significant. And I think like that's, that's why we are individuals because evolution figured out like, yes, actually segmenting the field in these ways can be used for all kinds of non-trivial, very efficient computation.